In 2002, Jim Olberg, Phil Plate, and Ralph Rene all made an appearance on the NPR program The Connection with Dick Gordon. Now, Jim, stay with me. I want to turn to another writer. This is a man who has published his own book. It's called NASA Mooned America. The title makes it pretty clear where Rene stands. Rene is outspoken among those who think that Apollo 11 never did land on the moon, and he's joining us from his home in New Jersey. Hi, Rene. Hello. I uh, Dick, there's one thing that the people that are taking this apart are not conspirators. We don't know each other until after we're published or whatever. So the word conspirator is applied to anybody that criticizes the government who was in conspiracy, if this is not true. Well, no one's ever known. done that. You're making that up. No one's ever applied the word conspirator to you. Well, sure you did. Uh, yeah, I may have used it in the beginning of the program, but <laughs> okay. Renee, let, let me, while anyway, I have you Mr. on the program, Oberg, ask you if you can do something for me. Your case is supported with photos and with theory. And now, if I ask you to put your finger on the one most telling piece of evidence that you use to say that the whole Apollo 11 thing was nonsense, what do you point to? Radiation in space. And that came later because the information has been so severely bottled up that it took me about 10 years to get the final proof. I, I don't, I, I, I'm going to have to ask you for like a grade three explanation of this. I thought it was uh, a case built on, on photos and things it like that. It was in the beginning. Have you read my book? I haven't seen it, no. Well, how, how can you possibly hope to do a book on this when I have the seminal book on, on this whole conspiracy scheme? Yeah, I've, I've seen a lot of websites <laughs> that, that actually make the same case that you do, you know? So no, I'm sorry you don't. What you see is a lot of uh, plagiarism going on, and Bill Casing was the first. I did not plagiarize him. He did not obviously plagiarize me. Renee, I'm You've asking you to make your else. case. I'm You've not asking you to defend word, your book. I'm just asking you to make your case why it is that Fine. people should not believe it. Fine. I'm going to regular phone. Okay? Am I clear? I can hear you. I'm just wondering if you can oh, make, oh, yes, I can. make the case for me. Uh, have you ever heard the name John H. Malden? New to me. Well, he was an ex-astrophysicist for NASA. He wrote a book called Prospects for Interstellar Tra Travel. On page 225, 225 of his book, we find these statements. Hang on while I get to them. Here we go. Oops. Come on, I'm pulling. This is a direct quotation. By comparison, solar flares can deliver GeV protons in the same energy range as most cosmic particles, but at much higher intensities. Increase of energy accounts for most of the increased radiation danger because of GeV protons or their products will penetrate several meters of material. Balding goes on to say that cosmic particles are dangerous, come from all sides, and require at least two meters of solid shielding around all living organisms. That's two meters of water. Now, he then states solar or star you flares. you translate this for me, Rene. The, the, the language that you're reading doesn't mean anything to me. Oh, by God, it should, sir. I mean, you've been employed by NASA all these years. Oh, wait, this, this is a direct quote from an, uh, from an astrophysicist. You're confused, uh, Mr. Rene. You're confused again. It's, uh, it's actually Dick Gordon, the host of the program, oh, asking oh, okay. you to make sense of this for me. Okay, I, we have not a too good a uh, shielding. No, you don't have too good an idea of what's going on in the world. <laughs> sir, <laughs> you're either a NASA apologist and totally ignorant, or you're a liar. I'm here to determine which. Uh, who who's the radiation belt? Who's the doubt? radiation belt named after? Who the radiation belt named James after? James Van Allen. I, I'm going to. What does James Van Allen say about the danger of the radiation okay, belt? Okay, you want to jump past Malden? Fine. Here I we go. Jump James to, yeah. Van Allen in 1959 in the March March issue of Scientific America on page 39. The title of the article is Radiation Belts Around the Earth. The subtitle is Instruments Born Aloft by Artificial Satellites and Lunar Probes. James Van Allen says those theories are flaky. That it's James Van Allen, hang on, 30 30 days days both later. of you, Rene and James and Stick Gordon here, I want to try and, and, and stop the conversation at that point because you guys are arguing at a level that sort of leaves the rest of us a little bit in the dark. Renee, tell me in your view why it is that 33 years after July of 1969, the conversation about whether or not the Apollo 11 landing is still going on. I mean, the, or the, the claim that it didn't because happen. Why is there something deadly wrong with NASA's picture of this? The first thing is James Van Allen very, very clearly stated in the beginning, okay, in the beginning that space 
surface was a sea of deadly radiation. He was hired by the government to find this out in the 50s. He had what he called raccoons shooting up there uh, 1,000, 2,000 miles into these belts. And the first thing they found out was that the Gagger counters became overwhelmed and, and became continuously busy. This is another quote. Uh, at 30 miles up, continuously busy, the Gagger counters would keep going, click, 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 click. And from, what is the number? From hey, I'm going to interrupt you here because sure. I'd like to bring Phil Plate into the conversation. Phil's an astronomer at the Physics and Astronomy Department at Sonoma State University. And Phil, your your book, Bad Astronomy, is and your and your website, badastronomy.com. This is part of what you do is working with the argument over theory here. Is That's that right? correct. Yeah. Yeah. I um, uh, it's been uh, a long road for this website. Mostly, it's uh, astronomy in general. But about a year ago, I picked up on this uh, this whole moon hoax nonsense. Stuff. Okay. So we know where you're at. You think it's nonsense. For the entire duration that Renee was on the air, Phil Plate kept his mouth shut and let Jim Olberg take all the heat. That is until the host rudely cut Renee off, just before he could provide Van Allen's numbers for particle counts per second in the radiation belts. Yet Phil Plate claims... I dealt with Renee many years ago on, a, on, a, on an NPR broadcast. Oh. Where they had they had called me and said we want to do a moon hoax show and I said that's great and they said we want to have one of the big moon hoax guys on and I said well here are the four big guys but of the four of them the one you want the least is Ralph Renee and they said why and I said because he's a he's a grumpy bastard and and some people would say oh that's you know that's a personal attack and it's like you know I strongly suspect that he would be the first person to call himself a grumpy bastard because he is he's a curmudgeon and. Uh, uh, but you know they did. They wound up getting him, and it was kind of funny because he's he's that rawr, 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 you know he's, he's growling and steaming and fuming and stamping his feet and saying nothing. He says yeah. nothing. It comes as no surprise that Phil Plate gave me the exact same silent treatment that he gave Ralph Renee. In case Phil Plate or any of his fans are watching, here are those three questions that you dodged. How can you allege? that the idea that NASA and the government would murder its own astronauts is a loathsome accusation, when in fact the CIA's William H. Craig proposed blaming John Glenn's possible death aboard Friendship 7 on the Cubans and use his death to justify all-out war. How can you frequently allege that Bill Casing claimed any kind of space travel is impossible, when, in the exact same interview that you refer to, Bill Casing explicitly states, I will concede that certain uh, unmanned vehicles might have made it to the moon. The Russians are supposed to have sent some unmanned vehicles to the moon, and possibly our surveyor did land on the moon. How can you allege that there were no major solar flares during the Apollo missions, when in fact NOAA's comprehensive flare index for major flares explicitly reveals that 8 out of 9 of the Apollo missions encountered a total of 30 major flares combined? Are you going to answer these questions and substantiate your claims, or instead, are you going to give us the exact same silent treatment that you have given me all these years whenever I asked you along these lines?